My name is Nisha McCray. I'm the founder and executive director of Bajika, a nonprofit organization where we bring our students' ideas to life using STEM. In this video, we'll use Fusion 360 to enhance a basic helmet design for my student Calvin's little brother, Ezekiel. The design we created in Tinkercad and exported to Fusion 360. If you haven't already, it's a good idea to review the first videos in this series to learn about the steps we followed to brainstorm and start creating a 3D design in Tinkercad and import into Fusion 360. In this video, we'll use Fusion 360 to enhance a basic helmet design we created in Tinkercad. Some of these updates include rounding hard edges by adding fillets and beveling edges by adding chamfers. To get started, let's orient the mask by clicking the front face of the view cube in the upper left corner of our canvas, which is what we call the work plane in Fusion 360, so that the front of the helmet is facing us. The view cube controls the camera view on your CAD model in Fusion 360, just like in Tinkercad. If we want to orbit the CAD model in our work plane, we left click and drag the view cube. For more precise controls, Click the corners of the view cube to rotate the camera to see some isometric views like these. Want to return to your default view? Just click Home. At the top of our helmet, you'll notice there are two halves of an oval. Since we imported the components of our CAD model from Tinkercad, we can use the Modify drop-down menu to change our design. It includes commands like press pull, fillet, chamfer, and shell, just to name a few. We'll explore these concepts later in this video. For our first modification, we will use our first tool from the modified drop down menu, the chamfer command. It removes materials from the object to create a blunt edge or a bevel on the edges of a sharp object. To do this, we'll select the outer inside edges of the half ovals on the top of the helmet. Next, let's select chamfer. A pop-up window or a dialog box for the chamfer command should appear. And the chamfer dialog will select chamfer type as equal distance. Let's modify the distance of the selected edge. Next, let's keep a few options at their default except corner type, which we'll modify to chamfer to have our newly beveled edges meet at the corner. Finally, we'll select OK, and boom! Now that we've chamfered our first edge, let's keep going. We'll select both of the upper outer edges of that shape that curves around the top of the helmet. How? Once we select one, we'll hold the Shift key and find the similar bottom edge on the opposite side. This lets us select multiple objects at once. Next, we'll reselect the chamfer command from the Modify menu, and the chamfer dialog will modify the selected edges. We can repeat this process if needed elsewhere on our helmet. We'll reorient the helmet by clicking the bottom front face of the view cube in the upper left corner. We need the front of the helmet to face us for this next step. Look for the bottom edge along the thickness of the visor forming the cylindrical base of the model on both sides. Once again, we select one. We'll hold the shift key and find the similar bottom edge on the opposing side. This lets us select multiple objects at once. Now we can modify these edges by using the press pull command from the modified menu, which lets us change the size or geometry of faces, bodies, and edges. Because we selected edges, the press pull command automatically routes us to the fillet command. Fillet allows us to round the edges of a solid body. In this dialog box, we'll insert our desired fillet radius on the selected edges. We'll reposition the view cube to the bottom face to see a view of the interior of our model, including the transparent lens component. Now, we will use the fillet command directly to add additional rounded edges. Once the dialog box pops up, we'll select the edge along the width of the lens. Then we'll hold the shift key while selecting the edge on the opposing side. 
let's select the Modify menu and directly choose the Fillet command. In the dialog, select Fillet from the menu. Next, we'll modify the radius type to constant to choose a consistent edge. Then, let's round this up by modifying selected edges by a radius length. We'll close the dialog by clicking OK. Now that we've used the chamfer and fillet commands, let's explore some other features of Fusion 360 to bring our helmet to life. Let's start with the face guard. To add new features to our face guard, we will first need to activate the face guard component by selecting it in the canvas, then we can move on to creating a sketch. A sketch lets us create a 2D blueprint that outlines the overall shape and finer details of the features we want to create. My student Calvin told us that his little brother loves a TV show that's set in the medieval age. So let's add some medieval flair to his helmet. To get started, we'll select one of the two large faces on the face guard of the helmet. Why? Every sketch requires a 2D face or plane to draw on. Next, we'll click the Create panel and select the Create Sketch command. We can select the Line command under the Create menu and sketch a shape of our choosing by connecting various lines. We'll use the Line command to create various rectangular shapes. When we're done, we'll click the Finish Sketch button. Repeat this process on the opposite side of the visor. Tip, look in your browser to locate your recent sketches. Now that we have our sketches, let's take them to the next level using the Extrude command. The Extrude command lets us transform a sketch or a face by adding depth. We can use the Extrude command to create a new solid body, join to an existing body, remove material from an existing body, or create a new component. Given we already have our sketches on the faces of our face guard, we can transform them using the Extrude command. First, we'll select one of the sketches we just created. We'll click Create Menu and select the Extrude command. An Extrude dialog will appear. In the dialog, we'll select Extrude Type as Entire Area. Next, we'll select Start as Profile Plane, which means the extrusion will start from the face or the profile plane we've selected. Let's select a direction as one side, as we're trying to keep it simple. Then, let's modify the distance or the depth of the extrusion. And let's skip a few of these options and go to Operations next. Now, there are a few operations we can perform in the Extrude dialog. Join lets us combine the new shape we are creating with an existing body, like our face guard. Cut lets us cut an area out of an existing body based on the new body. Intersect creates a body that intersects the existing body and new body. New body makes a new body in the assembly and new component makes a new component in the assembly. For the purpose of our face guard, we can choose to join or cut. So let's cut. We'll select OK to exit out of the extrude dialog. We'll repeat this process for the remaining sketches on the face guard. Now, let's move on to the helmet mount. Orient the helmet via the view cube in order to see the bottom face of the helmet mount. Then, Activate the helmet mount by selecting it in the browser. It should overlap with the cylindrical base. Let's click the Modify menu and select the Split Body command. In the Split Body dialog, we'll select the outer face of the helmet cylindrical base as the splitting tool. We'll deselect Extend Splitting Tool and choose OK. Now, let's delete the remaining parts we cut using the splitting tool and voila! We have a complete Fusion 360 model. Let's give it a quick twirl. If we see something we want to change in our design, like this chamfer we created on the top cap of the helmet, fortunately, we don't need to spend a lot of time going backwards. We can use Fusion 360's CAD Time Machine, otherwise known as the Timeline, in the lower left corner. Using our timeline, we can scroll our mouse past our assembly timeline. We can see every command including the chamfer command we've completed so far. We can make edits by right-clicking on the chamfer command, which opens the dialog. For example, let's adjust the chamfer distance. 
Once we've made our desired edits, we can simply click play on the timeline to see how each command has elevated our original helmet design from Tinkercad. Now, I do believe we have a satisfactory and, dare I say, great Fusion 360 model. In the next video, we'll show you how to really jazz up this model using the render workspace in Fusion 360 to make photorealistic images. And we'll show you how to select from Fusion 360's vast material library to create the perfect environment to showcase your model as a photorealistic cloud render. Until next time, don't forget, with the right tools, you can bring your ideas to reality.